So it's November 7th and uh, temperatures are starting to get cold here at night. We got down, I think to 40 degrees or maybe be uh, lower than that. I'm not sure. I didn't check what the weather channel said about it. Anyway, we still have some things going. These are, t this is a tomato plant that uh, honestly, I'm not even sure what variety it is. I cloned this from one of my spring plants and uh, there were two plants that were conglomerated together. One was a celebrity and the other one was an Arkansas traveler. But there's a pretty nice, like right there, there's a cluster of like, I don't know, seven or eight tomatoes. Quite a few more on here. So this was uh, started, I put it in the ground, I think, beginning of August. And they really struggle with the heat when you do that because they'll, they'll put lots of blooms on them, but no. And here's another one. I think this is the same variety. I've already gotten three nice tomatoes off these, although they all crack, which is a little disappointing. But if it's Arkansas Traveler, that's a, this year's the first time I've grown that variety. So I don't really know what to expect. But, uh, you know, they've been good. So not sure. It could be, cele these might be celebrities. I'm not sure. They look like they're bigger than Arkansas Travelers usually are. As for our other stuff, I have some potted plants here. That's cilantro. Cilantro is a good cold weather plant, so that's why I planted that. These are my potatoes. They should be done in a week or two, uh, according to the length of time. They've been, I think they were planted somewhere around the first week of August. These are red potatoes here. And the rest of these, which kind of look weird because they're all falling over, but... Those are Yukon Gold potatoes, which I've had pretty good luck with in the past. So there's two pots of Yukon Gold and one pot of red potatoes. These are carrots. These are uh, long imperators, I think. And then there's another pot of carrots over here. Uh, this is um, <clears throat> Danvers. So you got a tag, yeah, Danvers carrots. Uh, so anyway, carrots are kind of tough to grow. I'm getting. I'm not giving up though, I'm going to learn how to do it. This is a parsley plant that this is its first year, so this will overwinter and then it'll flower next spring. And they usually get, I mean the one I had last year, it like took up half of a 4x8 garden bed, so they get huge. And uh, they attract the black swallowtail butterflies, that's kind of why I grow them. This is a jalapeno plant that's still hanging on. I, I harvested everything off this last week and canned a couple of jars of pickled jalapenos and carrots and onions and uh, there's there's some new ones coming on I don't know if the, it's going to stay warm long enough for these to ripen we'll see what else is going on in my garden let's take a look let's see we still have this big oregano plant this thing was looking really bad and I found out that I had a lot of grubs Japanese beetle grubs in my garden and they were eating the roots of the plants on these. So I treated uh, the Japanese beetle uh, grubs and I gave the plants some fertilizer and it seems to be springing back pretty well. Um, <clears throat> this bed here is planted with onions that they won't be done until next year, late spring at least. And so there's two varieties in here. There's Texas 1015s and uh, a variety called red burgundy which is another short day variety onion if you know anything about onions in the south you grow short day varieties it's based on the hours of daylight when you want them to start bulbing and uh anyway i'm not going to go into a big explanation there's some mums that i put in there last year that kind of regrew this is a sage plant that i just clipped i just harvested i clipped all the growing shoots off of this and uh just got done drying out the sage, and uh, sage is a great herb. I love it. But, you know, if you know turkey stuffing, that's what they put in it. And uh, we're doing pretty good on herbs. I showed you the cilantro. That's sage. And those are some radishes. I'll show you what's underneath this cover here. Well, actually, I've got uh, carrots in spinach and um, peas no not peas what's the other thing 
carrots and spinach. Yeah, and radishes. There it is. Yeah, that's the other thing. And then, uh, what was I going to show you? Oh, yeah, our thyme plants. Thyme is a great herb to use uh, when cooking meat and uh, probably other things. I don't know as much as I should know about it, but we've got some fantastic thyme plants here. This one here is two years old, and, and these will, they'll keep going if you treat them right. Um, this is an empty pot. I just, I'm trying to figure out what I want to plant in there. Filling up these garden spaces. These are my peas, and I planted two kinds of peas, and one of them died off. I planted them too early. So it's, peas don't like hot weather, and I tried to plant them early to get a jump on things, but it just ended up knocking the plants back. So we'll see. I'm hoping just to get enough peas off of these to uh, get some seeds for planting peas in the spring, we, you know, when it's still cool. And these are my beets. I planted two different kinds of beets. Um, these, and there's some basil plants. There's some onions thrown in here, too. I had space and I had extra onion seedlings, so I got those going. And uh, these beets are doing pretty good. They're starting to, just starting to bulb out now. And uh, we're hoping to get a crop of beets before the um, first frost, which you never know. Sometimes you don't even get a frost here, so we'll see what happens. Um, this is my elephant garlic, which I've planted 30 elephant garlic plants in here. And like 26 of them have come up probably a little bit difficult to see them but those those get harvested around uh, I've been waiting until the end of May but I'm gonna get them at the beginning of May this year because I think I've been waiting too long trying to make them get or let them get bigger and what they're doing is separating into separate cloves they're not the real pretty you know, ones like you see in the store so elephant garlic's a good crop to grow it's if i had a bunch of bulbs right now to sell i could sell them for a fortune online they sell for like 27 dollars a pound in the seed catalogs so uh, if you can get it going good which i plan to at some point maybe um you know, you got to be in a place where you can grow stuff and not need to spend a lot of money on water and stuff and this isn't that place so there we go we're uh oh i'm going to do another video i'm going to undercover this because i want to take a look at this anyway and make sure i don't have anything attacking my plants but uh, i'll start that in a second